Hi, I'm George Bull, and I'm going to be talking about different overland vehicle categories, kind of category sizes, and what to take into account when you're thinking about um, the various sizes of vehicles that you can use. There is no perfect size vehicle that's going to work for every situation, and you have to work within the limitations of various size categories in order to find the one that works best for you. The first category or the first part of the spectrum is motorcycles. And at the other extreme of the spectrum are like large overlanding trucks. And obviously the needs and requirements on a motorcycle and the needs and the requirements on a overland truck are gonna to be totally different. And the experience you're gonna have in those vehicles is gonna to be totally different. It's not that one's better than the other, but the vehicle is going to define to a certain degree what you're gonna be able to do and what you're not gonna be able to do. Motorcycles on the one spectrum, their advantages are they're relatively inexpensive, even though you can spend a lot on a motorcycle. They're lightweight, they're easy to transport. So if you wanted to do international things, you can actually put a motorcycle quite feasibly on an airplane as cargo. But there's a big drawback and it's a benefit and a drawback when you're on a motorcycle, and that is that you are part of your environment, basically. You are at the mercy of your environment. And on one level, that can be a really rewarding way to travel. On another level, it can be really hard to sleep in a tent if you're in a really rainy area every night and try to find hotels and things like that. So most motorcycle people, they know if they're motorcycle people and they'll be, they've already probably got a good idea that they want to do something on a motorcycle. But that's one thing to just consider if you're not sure what type of vehicles to use. If you have a high comfort requirement, a motorcycle may not be the way you want to go. If you really like to be in tune with, with where you're traveling, with the people you're traveling around, a motorcycle might be the best way to go. The next kind of category or size classification would be a midsize, what I call like a midsize SUV, and that would be like a four-door Jeep, Land Rovers, either Defenders or New Land Rovers, Land Cruisers, small domestic midsize pickup trucks. And this size of vehicle is kind of the Goldilocks vehicle for a lot of people. The reason being, they're big enough that you can live in them or on them, at least sleep in them. You know, you can either carry a tent, depending on how you, you set them up, you could sleep inside. So they're big enough to give you those kind of living conditions. They're also, big enough that you can carry extra, some extra fuel, some extra food, a fridge, stuff like that. But likewise, they're small enough that you can still fit in a traditional parking lot at a supermarket. You can drive through cities. And most Jeep trails, they're called Jeep trails because they were intended for vehicles the size of a Jeep. So especially in, in North America, um, they're really well suited size-wise for a lot of trails and forest roads. The biggest disadvantage to that size vehicle is they're just big enough to know what you're kind of missing. So they're just big enough that you can sleep in them, but not necessarily sleep comfortably. They're big enough that you can take some fuel, but maybe not as much as you want. So that gets to be a challenge when you're getting into those size vehicles. They work really well, but you have to be aware of their limitations because there's a temptation to put a lot more in those vehicles than they're really designed to take. And it can become counterproductive where they actually become less capable off-road, less maneuverable because you're overloading them. The next category that I'm gonna go into or size are vans. And that would be like sprinter vans, uh, transits, the conversion, four by four conversions. With a van, you don't need four wheel drive, but there's a bit of a difference between van life and overlanding. 
depending on how you want to define either one. But overlanding is emphasizing going to more remote areas and getting a bit more off the beaten path. And in that case, you really want to be looking at a van with four wheel drive. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you're going to go in that size category, it just it's wise to have four wheel drive. The advantages to that size is that your footprint is actually not much bigger than a kind of mid-size SUV, but the amount of space that you have is a lot bigger. So the, the vans take advantage of space much better than an SUV. You're normally right at the hood. You, you have a lot of room, living room that goes all the way to the very back of the vehicle. You can often stand up in the vehicles. So for the amount of space they take, they have a, a maximum amount of living space. And again, they have a lot of the same advantages of a midsize SUV. You can park them in, in you know, normal parking lots. You can drive them in cities. You can take them down a lot of trails. A, a well set up Sprinter, 4x4 Sprinter, is actually a lot more capable than people give them credit for. It's not going to be the go-to vehicle if you are primarily going to be doing off-roading. But having said that, they're not bad off-road. The biggest disadvantage to them, though, is that you are not going to get the off-road ability of a Jeep, even if you build them out. And they're not quite as nimble once you get into rough terrain and off-road off -road terrain. So you're gonna pay a bit of a penalty off-road and you're gonna gain a lot, of, a lot of space. Another thing that's nice about vans is if you don't dress them up too much, they're great for stealth stuff. So if you have to be in urban areas, you can park a van and sleep in it in a parking lot, and it's gonna draw a lot less attention than if you have all these tents open up and stuff like that. After vans, the next size is kind of what I'm gonna call a small truck size. And that would be uh, domestic full-size pickup trucks like Ford 150, 250, Rams. It would also be like Fusos, Canters, smaller Unimogs. These vehicles are getting bigger than the mid-size vehicles. And the draw to those vehicles is that they start to have GVWs which is gross vehicle weights that um, you can start taking advantage of. You can carry a lot more. One thing I should say is I'll explain GVW because GVW, gross vehicle weight, a lot of people think that's the weight of the vehicle and that's not what GVW is. What GVW is, it's the weight of the vehicle combined with the driver, combined with the fuel, combined with all the stuff that you would carry. So if you have a GVW of 10,000 pounds, the vehicle may weigh 7,000 pounds, and that means you have 3,000 pounds to carry stuff. Normally speaking, the vans have okay GVWs. Your smaller SUVs, midsize SUVs, don't have very big GVWs, but when you start getting into pickup trucks, Fusos, Unimogs, you've got a much bigger GVW. So you can start carrying more fuel, you can carry more stuff, you can allow yourself more weight if you're gonna make a habitat. So that's the advantages. Another advantage is you're not gonna quite have the off-road ability in these vehicles as you would in a smaller vehicle by the sheer size. Once you start getting a larger full-size pickup trucks, some of these trails start to get tight. But you're definitely gonna have more ability in a vehicle like that than you would with a Sprinter, at least potential ability. You won't have quite as much room as maybe a Sprinter, but you'll have a lot more room than, for example, a Jeep or a Land Rover. The next kind of size category is proper trucks. And this would be like the LMTV, also known as a Stuart Stevens. It would be Mercedes trucks, MANs, some of these European chassis. I believe some people are doing Kenworths. So these are getting to be larger vehicles. And they have their own pros and cons. Now you're at a point where you can make a habitat on one of these that is larger even than a van.
They tend to be very heavy duty, so they're really good on bad roads, like if you're gonna drive across Siberia. They, these, these vehicles can take a, a beating much more than, than, than the smaller vehicles. And the biggest draw is that they, when you get to a vehicle that size, you can actually use it as a kind of a full-time living environment. Not to say that you can't do full-time in other vehicles, it's just the smaller the vehicle gets, the harder it is to, to sustain full-time living. And when you get up to a full-size vehicle, you can, it becomes much more manageable. There are some disadvantages, though, to large trucks, and, and some people, they're not as aware of this as they should be. They look at some of these larger trucks and you see the big tires and you see the ground clearance and they're all to these military specs and everything's super heavy duty on them. But despite that, they're not necessarily good off-road vehicles. Most of these trucks are not designed actually to go off-road, they're designed to go on really rough, bad roads. And they're big. So you can't expect to take an LMTV down a, a Jeep trail or on, for example, the Alpine Loop in Colorado or down some really small jungle trails. They're just physically too large. It doesn't matter how big the tires are or how much ground clearance they have or if they have diff locks, they just physically will not fit. And another thing to take into account is that campgrounds and parks quite often have limitations on the length the width, the height of vehicles, and they get to be a challenge in urban areas and um, in congested traffic. So that's something to really take into account. Um, the, the vehicles can be very intimidating in the beginning based on their size. Most people can, can manage, you get used to the big truck, but still it's stressful to do something like take those through a city. With all the vehicles, regardless of what vehicle you're driving, Weight is going to be your enemy, and people have a temptation to overload their vehicles. I've seen motorcycles where people should really be in like maybe a two-door Jeep, and I've seen people in Jeeps that should really be in a full-size pickup truck, and I see people in full-size pickup trucks who should actually be in a small truck, and I see people in trucks that maybe they should be in an RV because they've got so much weight, so much stuff dragging the vehicle down. So. As I was saying before with GVW, gross vehicle weight, you don't want to go to 100% of a vehicle's GVW. That's what the manufacturer intended mostly for on-road use. When you get to 100%, you have dramatically reduced the off-road ability of the vehicle and also the reliability because you're going to be pushing everything to its limit. So I tend to recommend to people to stick ideally 75% maybe 85% of the GVW, you don't want to go more than that. So one way to look at it is to imagine what do you want to do and how much is everything you're going to have weigh. So, you know, you take your fridge and you got to think like when, the, when you think about how much a fridge weighs, it's not just empty because you're going to have stuff in it. So you take things like a fridge, if you're going to bring a bike, your camping gear, uh, water that you feel you need, all the other supplies that you need, if you're gonna have a toilet, how much that weighs. You take everything and you combine all those weights, you add another 10% because everything ends up weighing more than you originally think, and then you divide it by 25%, and that gives you a GVW number to kind of work around. I can't emphasize this enough. You have to try to keep things light, which often means you should err on a slightly larger vehicle, even though you may lose some access and some off-road ability, than to try to cram a ton of stuff in a vehicle because that's gonna, in itself, limit the capabilities of the vehicle. One of the mistakes a lot of people make is that they look at it and they think you, you can fill the size of the vehicle. So the bigger the vehicle, People imagine like, I can just fill that with a habitat and all kind of stuff, and they don't really think about the weight. So the size does not necessarily mean you can carry more stuff, and it doesn't necessarily mean you can carry heavier stuff. But generally speaking, in the spectrum of vehicles, a 
small, light vehicle is going to give you a lot more access to go places, where a large, heavier vehicle is going to give you more comfort and it's going to allow you to travel independently for longer periods of time. When you're thinking about an overland vehicle in terms of size, you've got to kind of find out what category is going to meet your needs the best. And again, no category is going to nail it down perfectly and you're always going to have to make some compromises. But overall, when you're trying to figure out what vehicle is going to work best for you, it's best to kind of step back and look at which size is going to work for you before you get carried away on any particular vehicle. Any vehicle can be an overland vehicle. It doesn't matter how big it is, it doesn't matter how small it is. What matters the most is that the vehicle that you choose is the vehicle that's gonna work for you and do what you wanna do and how you wanna travel. At the end of the day, what's most important is just getting out there and going with what you got.